Welcome, everyone. Today, I'm joined by Andrew DiCosidoro, the president of Oncolytics Biotech US and global head of business development. Andrew, thank you for being here. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, everybody, for having me. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. We've spoken with Matt Coffey from Oncolytics multiple times before, but really excited to talk about some other things about what the business is doing. So let's dive right in, Andrew. Can you tell us about the patient population for triple negative breast cancer? Why has this patient population in particular had such a difficult time finding effective treatment options in the past? Yeah, it's it's a patient population that's really struggled with, um, with uh, good treatment options that can especially extend survival in metastatic in the metastatic setting. Um, it's a smaller subset of all breast cancer patients. Um, out of the 3.6 million U.S. patients currently living with breast cancer, we estimate about a half million are triple negative. So it's not the largest of the subsets, but it's the one with the highest unmet need. Um, right now, there are not many options to do much beyond uh, modestly improve progression pre survival, or at least that was the case until. Keytruda was approved for treatment of triple negative breast cancer. The challenge with Keytruda is that um, you need to have a certain level of expression of something called PD-1 in order to be eligible for treatment, to even have a chance to succeed at treatment with Keytruda. And of those patients that, um, that have metastatic triple negative, only about four out of 10 um, are actually eligible based on their PD-1 expression. And of those, only a small subset will respond. So as you can see, for a small subset, Keytruda really is a great product, but the majority of metastatic triple negative patients are not eligible for treatment. So the question is, how do you make more patients eligible for Keytruda? And the answer potentially is with Pelirep, because we've shown in other trials that we can raise the expression levels of PD-1. So what we envision is potentially using Pelirep to raise expression of, of PD-1 and also to make the tumor microenvironment more permissive to products like Keytruda, thereby making more patients potentially eligible to have this transformative care with a product like Keytruda. Okay, that's great. Good baseline. Let's go a little bit deeper beyond that surface level. Can you tell us more about PD-L1 on upregulation? Why is it important to patients in need of treatment options? Why is this so critical? Yeah, again, it's because so many of these patients just aren't eligible based on their natural PD-1 or PD-L1 expression for treatment. And essentially, they 60 plus percent of patients simply don't express enough of that so that their tumors would be likely to respond to Keytruda. So to make them uh, eligible, you really have to change what the tumor microenvironment looks like. One of the things you want to do is to increase their expression of PD-1 or PD-L1. You also want to make sure that the tumor microenvironment itself is permissive to treatment. It's as likely as possible to respond to a product like Keytruda. And we've shown in multiple tra um, uh, trials, uh, the most notable being um, AWARE-1, that we really can remodel that tumor, remodel its microenvironment, so that a product like a check one inhibitor, such as a blockbuster like Keytruda, can finally respond. Keep in mind that Keytruda and the other check one inhibitors on their own, while they've been a huge uh, advance in the treatment of, of solid tumors only work in about two out of uh, 10 patients. So the majority of patients who take products like Keytruda don't uh, respond because they don't have a permissive micro tumor microenvironment. So what we're doing is really making that tumor more likely to respond. And as you can imagine, if you take even uh, two patients and turn it into three or four, that's a huge improvement in general, and it could be transformative and triple negative, where outside of Keytruda, you really don't have anything else that works. Got it. That makes sense. So you can definitely see the importance there. And then again, of course, we've talked in previous interviews about Pelorea rep synergies with checkpoint inhibitors. What makes triple negative breast cancer an indication worth pursuing with this combination therapy? Yeah, I think it really comes down to doing right by the patient. Um, certainly, um, we want to uh, treat as many patients as possible, especially those with such a grim uh, prognostic profile once they're metastatic and triple negative. Uh, but even just the size of that market is huge. If you think about it, you know, there's a half million living with, um, with uh, triple negative breast cancer at any one time in the US. Uh, it's obviously a much smaller subset that are living with metastatic disease but of those, six out of 10 can't be treated with Keytruda right now. So if we can take you know, two out of those six um, that aren't responding and make them eligible, that's huge. It's a huge market. Uh, keep in mind 
that we expect the market for triple negative to be worth well over a billion dollars for Keytruda, just out of the ones that do respond that have a natural high expression of TD1. So now if we can increase that number, you know, from four out of 10 to say six out of 10, that's another half billion dollars. That's a huge market potential for, for us and a great way to really transform care for these patients who are in great need of additional opportunities for treatment. Great. And then going into another step here, tell us about the progress of the IRENE study so far. What are you hoping to see with that moving forward? Sure. So IRENE is really an interesting study for us because IRENE really looks at exactly what we've been describing. Can we raise uh, expression of PD-1? Can we um, make the tumor microenvironment more permissive? In this case, we're using um, Insights um, checkpoint inhibitor, retifanlimab, but we do believe that you can extrapolate from one checkpoint to another. So if we see what we hope to see in IRENE, which is uh, proven remodeling of the tumor microenvironment, much like we saw previously in other trials, the ability like in other trials to raise PD-1 levels so that in this case, retifanlimab is more efficacious, then we really have the proof of concept that would help us lead into and inform how we design a registrational program. The good news so far with IRENE is that the trial, as we presented at San Antonio Press Conference last December, has proven to show safety of, of the product. There have been no adverse events so far. And we're quite heartened with the rate at which we're recruiting patients in that trial, because obviously it's one of the smallest subsets, triple negative breast cancer. So um, trying to get those patients on uh, means that you have to find those patients in the first place. And Irene has done a very nice job so far of finding those patients and recruiting them into the trial. Outstanding. All good information and a wonderful, wonderful follow-up to everything we've discussed with Matt Coffey in previous interviews. Andrew DeGodadoro, the president of Oncolytics Biotech US and global head of business development. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.